When you say public, how public? Mm -hmm. So it would be anyone that um, has access to view the student profile. So any teachers, school admin, board admin, if they go to their profile, they would see it. Okay, so they have to have you. So that's good, but everybody with view. Yeah, so anyone that has access to, to view the student would be, be able to see all the comments. So I can show how the notifications work as well, because um, they are a little bit different for school administrators. So for school admin um, in their settings, um, under settings preferences, so only school administrators would have these two settings here, student updates and communication. So they can, you can manage um, if you receive notifications or not. So under student updates, you have the option to receive notifications for all students um, or only students that are being followed. So if it's all students, that means, um, Whenever a comment is posted on a student profile, you'll get an email for it. Whereas only students that are being followed, if I have this selected, um, on the student profile, I'll have this option here. Uh, I'm just going to student profile. So then if I have that selected, I'll have this notify follow updates option. So then, I'll only receive notifications for those students that I've manually chosen to follow instead of all students at the school. So they have the option there. By default, they would get it for all students. Um, and then the second option is receive communication for all schools, selected schools or no schools. So this is an, an additional um, layer. So if you have all schools, that means you'll receive um, communication for all schools based on this filter. So it, it would use both. So if I selected all schools, it would be um, all students that are being followed from all schools. Whereas if I had selected schools, then I would select which schools. Um, so then that kind of comes into play if, um, say you're a, a user that your main school is the high school, but you have access to your feeder schools, but you only want to receive communication for your the high school, you can select that here. So you're not getting those um, notifications for the feeder schools as an example. So you have that option here, or you can select no schools, so you'll get um, no notifications. Again, so again, this is, yeah. This would be restricted to your data access by schools. So if you only have one school, you only get to see one school. You can't go outside of those bounds ever. Yeah, that's correct. So they'll, yeah, this would only be, the second one would only be relevant if you have access to more than one school. Otherwise you would, you could still select no schools, but as far as selected schools, you only have the option to select your one school. And again, this is just for school administrators. Teachers will automatically receive updates and board administrators won't receive any. So the second one I wanted to show was the notes feature. So um, the notes also allows you to share important information with staff, or you can also detail um, information privately. So it's different from communication in the way that it's you can customize the security so you can choose who sees it, whereas the um, communication stream would always be public. Um, the notes are also accessible from several screens. So this is like the class profile, for example. Um, you have this notes feature here. So anytime you see the notes, um, this little blue speech bubble, it's it's on a lot of the screens. So like in gradebook, um, at risk, the um, student tracker group profiles, anywhere you see this, you can access the students' um, notes. And you can also add notes from here as well. Whereas the communication stream, you'd have to actually go to the student profile to add them. Um, and then the notes you can also add directly from the student profile as well, just going from this notes tab um, and then sh show all notes. So this would be the notes dashboard. So I'd be able to see any notes that I've created myself or any notes that others have um, 
created that were either public or shared with me. Um, and then you have this drop down here for type. So once there's notes added, you'd be able to filter it also. So we have all the all these different types. So when you go to add a new note on the right hand side here, you have the option to add um, a note type. So you can organize the notes um, based on any of these folders. And depending on which screen you're accessing the notes from, sometimes it'll automatically be populated. So for example, if you're, um, I'll close this. If I'm accessing from the gradebook overview screen, it'll automatically populate the note type as achievement. Um, if you were to open it from the assessment page, it'll automatically um, select assessment. So here I've opened it from gradebook overview. So by default, the type will be set to achievement, but you can always switch it to one of these other ones. So um, that's another feature of the notes. So when you're adding a new note, you have the option here. So if you want it to stand out and add like this important label, it'll just add it to the um, the beginning of the note description. So I can show you what that looks like and what it if it's selected or not selected. So the note date, so this will automatically be populated based on today's date, but you can select any other dates um, if, if a different date would be relevant. Um, and this is where the security is handled. So by default, the notes will be private which means that um, only the user who's creating it would be able to see it and nobody will receive a notification that it's been added. Whereas public would work the same way as the um, communication stream. So anyone that's responsible for the student and has access to their student profile, they would be able to see the, the note if they were to open the, the student's notes dashboard. Um, and they'll receive a notification if it's public based on their settings. So um, classroom teachers would receive a notification and um, school administrators would receive a notification depending on their settings. So then if you have private selected, you also have the option here to select other users. So this would be kind of similar to what we were looking at with the student tracker groups where you can share it with um, specific student or specific other staff members. So if you select the select button, you'll have all of the staff from this, this school available to share it with and you can select them um, and then classroom teachers only would would share it just with um, the students other teachers it wouldn't share it with the the school administrators so you have a few options there um, and then you can attach files so this would be linked to the student portfolio so if you wanted to um, attach files it would open the student profile you'd have to upload something here um, and then you can add the file to your notes. And then depending on the um, security you've selected, so if you have it private and you add a, attach a file um, and then you were to go to view the student portfolio, um, if it was a private note, the file would also remain private so people wouldn't be able to see it. Um, whereas if it's public, if someone were to open the um, student portfolio, they'd be able to see that attachment. So that's another thing to think about. And then content would just be the, the description of the notes. So depending on what you want to share. So for achievement, um, student hand, I'll just say the student handed um, one in late as an example. So then if I save here, it'll be added to the notes dashboard for the student. And this is what that important um, setting does here, it just adds this, this red label at the beginning of the notes um, description. And I'll have my assessment type here. So um, I, if I filter on achievement, it would show up. But if I filtered on something else, it wouldn't. So you have the option here. Um, you, you can also download the student notes. This would download it as a PDF for this specific student. And this is also where you can edit and delete. So if you wanted to delete the note, you would just have to open this notes dashboard for the student, and then you can edit or delete it. So this is the download. So it's just a PDF with all of, it would show all of the students' notes in a document. Um, and then one last thing to show for the notes is on the home page. 
if you go under account, there's a section here for notes. So this would be the notes dashboard for the school. So this would show all of the notes that have been added for students at this school. Um, and it, again, it would be based on your security. So it would only show, it would show all of the notes that you've added yourself, as well as any public notes that have been added by um, other staff members. So this is where you can see all the notes in one place for all students at the school. Um, and then we have this feature here to show to share selected notes. So this was um, done by request where um, principals had added their own private notes about students. Um, and then they wanted to share those with the incoming principal. So they were retiring and they wanted to share all their notes with the incoming principal. So this is where you could do that as well. So you can, all of the notes that are private, um, they'll have this little lock symbol and there'll be a check mark beside it. So this is how, if you wanted to share this, um, note the private notes um, for multiple students at the same time, you can use this share notes feature here. And then you can select who to share it with. And then that person would be able to see the notes if they go to the student's profile and on their um, this notes dashboard here. And this one you can also, um, I only have one note here, so it's, it's hard to show the filters, but you can also filter the notes. So you could see all the notes by grade, um, security, so if it's public, private. Um, you can also show it for inactive students, and you can filter on ones that are just created by you. So was there any questions about the um, notes feature? Maria, for the notes feature, when you say the student gets, or the teacher gets notified, are they uh, notified by email as well? Yeah, so they'll get a, an email notification and they'll also get a notification um, in the portal in this notification section. So there'll be a little one number here. Oh, OK, great. Thank you. So they'll, they'll, see, they'll see it in both places. OK, so then the next section I was going to cover would be the parent communication. So you can access the parent communication from a few different areas. So the first one would be um, either gradebook overview or class profile. So if you're looking at the class profile, um, you'll see that there's this button here, message parents. So it won't be, you won't be able to click it um, by default. You'd have to use these check boxes within the class profile and that'll enable the message parents. So you can either, if you, if, a teacher wanted to message all parents for students in their class, they can select this top checkbox. Um, or if they just wanted to message specific parents, they can check these. Um, and then if I select message parents, it'll bring up this pop up here. And I'll be able to see all the parents that have um, emails and once the parents where we don't have the email, so this would be parents where we don't have that information yet. So you'll be able to see all the students that we have that you're able to send the email to, as well as ones that you might have to reach out to separately. And the parents that show up here, they would have to have the required access. So they'd have to have that um, kind of similar to how the access works for the parent portal. So they'd have to have those specific access flags. So active student access to um, records, I believe, and uh, one other flag. So they'd have to have all that access to show up here. Um, and then the ones that have this green check mark, that means that they have um, an active parent portal account. So you can see which ones have active accounts, which ones don't. So that's where the email versus message function comes in. So message is um, useful if parents are using the parent portal. That means that the message will appear in their parent portal. It'll show under the um, recent communication whereas email would just send it directly to their email address. So with the message option, you also have the option here to notify by email. So that means it'll show up in the parent portal as a message, and it'll also send an email to them, letting them, letting them know that the teacher has messaged them or the school administrator has messaged them. Whereas email, it would just send, send directly to their email address, and you have the option here to invite to the parent portal, so that would just um, 
provide them with information on where to register. So as an example here, um, so this is in Sandbox, so it's it's not going to send actual emails to the parents. Um, it'll just send it to my email address. So I'm just going to select this parent here. So if I were to select send, then that would send a message to their email. And then I can view all of my sent messages um, by going to this accounts screen and then communication. So on the communication page, if I go to sent, then I can see all of the messages that I've sent out from the Compass portal. And then if you click on this, you can see all the details. And then to see who the recipients were, you would just select this um, blue I button. And then I can see who, who received the email. Um, and then there's also options if you're a, if I log in as a teacher, there's also grade rec gradebook reports that can be sent directly to parents. So if I go into gradebook and then the reports page, there are two reports that have the male parents option. So it would be the progress or progress summary. So the progress report would show all of the students, any gradebook assessments that have been added for their class and um, what marks they had for each of those. And then you have the options menu where you can show and hide different things. So if you want to show the, um, if you want to hide the graphs or the overall mark, you can, you have those options here. And then once you save your parameters, um, you'll have this, male parents option. So it would work the same way where you have all your parents listed on the right and then you could see which parents um, where we don't have a, an email. So this one student, we don't have a, a parent email for them. Um, and then it'll automatically populate. This is child's progress report. But you can edit these messages here, this the email subject line or the um, content of the email. And then you have the option here to download the attachments. So what this would do, it would each parent would receive the one attachment for their student, um, and then you can download these to to double check. And it would work the same way. So you'd be able to see the sent messages through the um, communication page, and then the other one would be the progress summary. So this one's the layout's a little bit different. It's broken down by category, um, and then you have the option to show or hide your different categories here or show levels percentage and then the male parents would be the exact same so it would show the you could email the this progress report instead and then the attachments would be um, for this progress summary report and then the other option within the communication feature is um, so I've gone into account communication. So you can also send messages directly from here as well. So you have a teacher's op tab and a parent's tab. So the parent's tab, you would have kind of the same options where you can select email or message. And then you can select, and then this way you can select based on class. So instead of email, um, going from the class profile, you can go directly from this communication stream or this communication page. Um, based on class. And then the teacher's option would be um, to send a direct message to another teacher within the portal. So you have all of your, your teachers at the, at the school available here, and then you can send them a message. Um, and that would show up in their notifications. So, or sorry, in their communication. So if, if you were to send a, a message directly to another teacher, they would see a little um, notification right in this communication um, row under account. And then the message would show up in this inbox section here. So this is where you would see all of your um, messages that you've received from other teachers, um, as well as sent, that could be anything sent to another staff member or to parents, you would be able to see in the sent area. So are there any questions about 
this section, the um, messages or emails to parents or other staff? If you send something to a parent, is there a back and forth? Um, I think it would, it would, they would be able to reply to your email. Um, if it was through email, if it was through message, I believe they would be able to send a message to you kind of the same way. So it would show up for the, if they were to send a message back, it would show up in the, the teacher's inbox. But if it were an email, then they would be able to reply to the email and then just go from there. Okay. And is there... Do you know if there's a way to turn off the response capability, if there is one? Yeah, we should be able to. If, if you didn't want them to be able to um, like respond to the emails or send direct messages, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, we should be able to turn off the... I think it is turned off right now. So in the parent portal, they won't see the communication. So okay. it's something, yeah, you can turn on or off. I think right now it's turned off. Yeah. All right. Okay, so that that was it for as far as the communication features. Um, and the last thing I was going to cover was the intervention strategies. Um, but if so, if there's any questions about communication, we can cover those now, or we can circle back to those at the end as well. And the last thing I wanted to cover today was the interventions. So that's another student monitoring feature that we didn't have time for last week. So that would be under this purple student monitoring section, um, intervention strategies. So the intervention strategies, you can add them directly from this screen here, um, or you can add them from the class profile or the gradebook overview, anywhere where you see this orange plus button you can add the interventions directly here. Um, and you also have this option here, kind of similar to the message parents, where if you were to select students, you can um, add interventions from them that way as well. So there's a few different options of um, how you want to identify students um, that would need an intervention. So if you were looking at the class profile and you wanted to add an intervention strategy, let's say for students that had um, a certain number of absences or who were under kind of below standard on the report card or EQAO, you can add them, you can filter the student profile on any of those um, and then add, add an intervention for all, any of the relevant students. You can also use the student tracker group. So if you've um, created any student tracking groups for students that should be, um, that are considered at risk or should be monitored, you can filter your class list based on those. Um, and then in the group profile as well, if you wanted to add, um, if you were to create a group and you wanted to add interventions for all students in that group, it would work the same way as the class profile where um, you can select all and then add an intervention. So the way the interventions work, I'll just select one student as an example. And this inf intervention um, pop-up will look the same no matter where you launch it from. So I'm currently logged in as a super user, so I have this add need, add evidence, but normally um, any other type of user wouldn't see that. They would just have this list here for the needs and evidence. So these are just ones I've added as, uh, as examples for this demo. In production, I don't believe you have any um, needs or evidence set up yet, but depending on if you're going to use this, um, you can customize what would be listed as the needs and evidence. So um, depending on which student I've added, it'll have their name here. And then you can select the need. So this would be um, the concern that you have about the student. So for example, if you have, um, if you want to create an intervention strategy based on their attendance, uh, you can select attendance. And then evidence would be the data set that um, kind of proves the, the need. So for example, the, their based on their attendance records, you'd want to create an intervention for their attendance needs. But we have, these are the other options here. So it could be based on their um, 
report card language mark or their um, progress report. Um, if you want to, if you have academic concerns based on those, you could also select that. So it really depends how you want to set these up. Then the intervention. So this would be the description. So the strategy you'll be um, using to address that need that you've selected. So um, whatever your intervention plan is. And then you have the option here, intervention done at school, home, or both. So if it's just something that's going to be done within the school, if it's something that's going to be done um, in cooperation with the parents, you can select school and home. Uh, and then you have your start date, so you can select from the calendar, and then review by. So the review by date is important because um, on this date, the person that, who, that created the intervention will receive a notification just reminding them that they have the, an intervention that needs to be reviewed. So if I select the 29th, um, that means on the 29th, I'll get an email saying that I have interventions to be reviewed. And then I can show you what the review process looks like. So I've just added an intervention. So if I go into intervention strategies, I'm able to see this intervention here. Um, and then you have all your filters here, so you can filter the, the full list based on the need, the evidence, grade, whether it's done at home or school, um, and months. So you can select all months, that would be for the current school year, um, or you can filter on a certain specific month. Um, and then show only pending would show um, interventions that have reached this review by date but haven't been reviewed yet. So that's but the... Um, what this setting would do. So then on the review by date, the person would get a notification so they can come into here and then select this edit button. So it'll show everything that's been input for the student. And then at the bottom, um, there's these new sections. So you can add student evidence based on the results of the intervention. And then you'll have two questions here. So these two questions will determine um, how the intervention record is color-coded. So the first question is, was the intervention successful? So that just means, um, did the student respond well to the intervention strategy or was improvement seen over the course of the intervention in relation to um, the need identified? So for example, um, has their attendance improved? Um, you can say yes or no. And the, the second question would be, is the student recovered according to the need? So if you were to select yes, that means that that need that you selected is no longer a concern. Um, but you can also select no, so that would mean that it was partially successful. So that would mean you can select yes for the first question, but no for the second. So then that could indicate that um, the intervention strategy should be reviewed again at a later date. So you can change this review by date. So then you can get a, another, another notification um, say in two or three weeks time to review it again and see if it's if you've seen any more improvements. Um, or it, or you can um, continue this intervention maybe in parallel with another one. So if I were to select yes and no, you also have your option here to um, input the justification. So that would just be the explanation of why you selected um, how you answered the, the last two questions. So once I save, then you'll notice it changes the color coding. So yellow would be partial success. So that means I answered yes to one of the questions and no to the other. Um, fail would be if I had selected no for both. So if I had selected that the intervention was not successful, it would show up as um, red. Success would be if I had, had selected yes for both of those questions so that the intervention was successful and the student is recovered. Um, and then gray would mean that um, this review by date that I had set has passed and I haven't completed this review saying if it was successful or not. So the gray indicates that it needs to be reviewed. Um, and then if it, if it were white, that means that it's kind of a new intervention. It hasn't reached that review by date, so it's um, still in progress. Uh, and then you have the option to edit delete here and then it also shows up on the student profile so if i go to student profile there's this tab here for inter interventions 
So then you can edit the, the intervention from here as well, and you could see any previous interventions that have been applied for the student um, in any previous year. So uh, were there any questions about uh, as far as the interventions? <laughs> 